Hi there, I'm Ken Lammers. Welcome to Minor League Matters. And today we're going to talk about pace of play and the lies that baseball is telling you. And with that, let's get cracking. Okay, so it's time for baseball to start up again. And, of course, every time baseball starts up again, they start talking about pace of play. How terrible it is that games average somewhere around three hours like they have for years. Uh, you know, and how we must solve this. And they give you the great panaceas, the great lies. Oh, we can solve it by, you know, timing the pitchers. We can solve it by making batters in the batter's box quick, uh, more quickly. Uh, we can solve it by not doing intentional walks as intentional walks, just doing, yeah, you go on down there, which is stupid, interrupts the flow of game, confuses people in the stands, and it's just stupid. And, uh, you know, yes, I know that it's very rare that the person actually slaps at the ball and gets a hit, or that they trick him and throw the ball down the center and get him strike, struck out. Yeah, I know that that's rare, but the reality is is that emotion builds quite often during the intentional walk you know home teams boo or cheer or whatever emotion builds when you just go go on down there there is no emotion to that it's a really bad way to do it it interrupts the game and if you're not watching closely say you're in the outfield bleachers you may not understand what's going on because sometimes it's hard to figure out what they're doing down there at the plate when you're you know back in the cheap seats that's a bad call right they need to fix that back the way it was but here's the thing they're lying to you about what the cause of all the delays are why it takes so long the biggest single delay is the break between half innings right if you look at it at least theoretically between every half inning there is a two and a half minute break quite often it goes longer right they're playing some sort of game on the field and they can't clear in time, right? Or somebody's out in the stand with the camera and, the, and they're doing a contest with somebody there and it doesn't finish before two and a half minutes. Or somebody's dancing on top of the dugout or whatever, right? Quite often, it ain't two and a half minutes. It's much longer. Three, three and a half, you know, something like that. But let's just assume it's two and a half minutes, right? So... From the second through the eighth inning, you have two two and a half minute breaks, one at the halfway point and one at the end. So that's five minutes, right? And in the first inning, you've got one two and a half minute, and in the uh, ninth inning, you've got one two and a half minutes. We're not talking about overtime or extra innings. So they then end up with eight times five minutes, which is 40 minutes of break time, right? 40 minutes. Four zero, four zero minutes that take time away from the game. Whereas if they just went out, set in place, you know, the players went to their positions, the pitcher went to the mound, the batter went to the batter's box, and the ump said, play ball, or, you know, whatever, play, and uh, they started right then, say a minute Let's say it was a, they actually gave them a minute to set and all that, so they weren't doing all the tossing balls around and all that sort of thing. Um, and they just went and played. A minute for you know eight innings would be two minutes for for the uh, for the seven innings and and one minute for the first, one minute for the ninth. So you get eight innings of two minutes, sixteen minutes. Okay, do the math. A lot of time would be shaved out of games if they fixed this, right? But they're not going to fix this. They're not going to fix this because at the higher levels, you know, MLB, they want commercials. And when are you going to do commercials otherwise? you got to do them, you know, in between innings, in between breaks between innings and half innings. So that's, you have to have that two and a half minutes or you can't get your commercials, right? And if you're a minor league team and you're doing the whole family fun thing because, you know, your team could be amazing for the first third of the uh, first third of the season and then the mothership decides to move some players up 
or decides to move some people down to you that ain't all that good, but they expect to play because they got a contract, right, or whatever, a high-paying contract, um, suddenly your team could go from being the best in AA to the worst in days, right? And the mothership doesn't care because they want you to train those players so that they're good when they get back up to the mothership, right? They don't care that if you are, you know, the... Uh, uh, the Tennessee Smokies, and you're playing and trying to get the championship of your league, they don't give a hoot. They want you to train their players. And so the minor league teams have to concentrate on the we're a family-friendly, wonderful, it's a fair, right? You're coming out to a fair, dad gets to watch some sports, the kids get to go to the bouncy things and the you know, bouncy uh, blow-up things, and everybody gets, you know, cotton candy and hot dogs and all that sort of stuff's going on, and they're doing the contests on the field and all this sort of stuff, and you have to have a longer, that longer break to do the contests on the field, right? So they don't want it to go away. So whenever you hear somebody complain about pace of play, which means how long the game lasts, it's just a fancy way of saying how long the game lasts, pace of play. Whenever you hear somebody complaining about that, it's garbage if it's if they say that the fix is the pitcher, the batter, intentional walks, you know, uh, somebody yelling cold beer in the outfield or something like that or, you know, some any of that kind of stuff uh, you know, is just garbage. The biggest delay in the game is the breaks between innings and if they were serious serious about fixing this they would shorten that and then they would do so the kind of advertising you see when you watch soccer matches which don't break and therefore have to have ads on the on the screen during the game right you know your your scores have somebody's ad in between there's an ad running at the bottom look the TVs you watch things on nowadays are you know 60 inch behemoths so there's plenty of room for them to constantly run ads while you're going. God help us, I don't want to get like soccer where every single player is a walking billboard. I, I hope that doesn't happen. But, you know, if they were really worried about how long the game takes, they could do that, right? You could have, you know, the name of the team across the front, uh, the number on, you know, the, the shoulder or something like that or across back, and then have, you know whatever logo from whatever uh, you know sponsor on the arm on the back somewhere somewhere where it would be prominent and save and and make money that way they're not willing to do all this right and therefore they go on and they do silly things like they've been doing lately ineffective things for instance as i recall once they put in the uh, sh uh the uh time uh, you know the pitch clock right 20 second pitch clock for everybody in minor leagues or at least for double a AA and triple a and all that they saved seven minutes an amazing seven minutes was shaved off the game by doing that uh and of course you know there's the rules that the batter has to keep at least one foot in in the box once he goes up to bat uh it's the most unenforced rule in baseball uh, and uh, it's just bad. And then, of course, they tried to close down some on the uh, on the meetings at the mound. And they, a couple of years ago, they really clamped down on it, and it worked for a little bit. And then, of course, the umps kind of backed off again and just let it happen, like it always has. It's always been something that people just kind of assume is going to happen. So they've already got one bad rule in place they need, need to fix the intentional walk rule and just let intentional walks be done the way they're supposed to happen right uh, four pitches outside ta-da you know uh and you can't tell me that takes too much time because the pitcher really doesn't have to set and go through a whole lot of motions if he's throwing three feet out three feet outside of the uh, doggone plate right he can just go up there and toss under or overhand sidearm whatever just as long as it's a terrible pitch. Well, terrible pitch that can be caught by the catcher. Okay, so this year, this year's solutions to the pace of play problem 
is that they are going to, in the minor leagues, they're going to do one solution that I think is probably okay, and they're going to do one which is just stupid, right? The one that they're going to do is probably okay is limiting the amount of times that you can have, you know, big get-togethers at the mound, right? Uh, depending on what level you're at, Double A AA and Triple A are going to be limited to a certain number, uh, and below Double A, they're going to allow more. Right? Makes sense, right? I'm not a big believer. I'm a big fan of big convocations at the at the mound, right? Where everybody comes in and the the coach comes in and all that sort of stuff. You know, no. You know, it really doesn't need to. Okay, let me take that back. In the lower levels where they're training people, you know, rookie single A, advanced A, probably double A, yes. Meetings at the mound where the pitching coach comes out and goes, look, you're doing this, something's wrong with your motion here, do that. I think you're reading the calls wrong, you know, that, that sort of thing. Yeah, okay, that makes sense. Triple A and MLB, no way. There's no reason that that coach should ever be coming to the mound except to pull somebody, right? Uh, there's no reason that the team should be coming into the mound, right? I realize this makes great stuff for for television shows and movies, and we see all these, you know, meetings at the mound, and they're humorous or they're dramatic or whatever. No, just stop doing them at least at the upper levels. And I don't know; if it saves time. It probably does save some time. You'll probably shave what five minutes off of a game, off game averages if you do it. But, uh, you know, that's an okay rule and could be implemented across the leagues. The really stupid thing they're doing is they're going to start the really gimmicky, bad rule where you put somebody on second base at the beginning of an inning that's in extra innings. So from the 10th inning on now, the last person that batted will automatically be put on second base. And then they'll start batting. This will happen for both teams. So, automatically what happens at that point is first batter bunts. I, oh, by the way, I've seen this done. The Frontier League does it at like inning 11 or 12 or something like that, right? I've seen it done. It's a terrible thing. It's a gimmick. It, it just does not play well. And it's just, I mean, both sides have the same strategy when you go up. You bunt the first guy. Now that move that means you're you're you got one out at first and you got a guy at third, right? Okay. Now you've got two options. You can swing away or you can try a suicide squeeze. Suicide squeezes are not statistically uh, successful. Uh, you know, I leave Chad Dotson and and his folks to go out there and and figure out whether what the exact statistics are, but anybody who's watched this realizes that suicide squeezes aren't statistically successful. They're cool, they're exciting, and when they work, they're amazing, uh, and when they don't work, they're a big letdown. But, you know, the swing away will probably be the most uh, common thing. So, and the play, the play will always be the same, throw to home base, right? A home plate. And that's it, and it's just... It's dumb, right? Um, it's gimmicky. It doesn't make sense. If you really want to fix the extra inning thing, and believe me, I've been to long extra inning games. Last year, I went to a game in Louisville that started, I think, about an hour late because of rain delay, and then went 16 innings, and I got out of there after 2 a.m. I think 2.30 was more realistically when I got out of there when one of the teams just collapsed and the other scored finally on them right um so you know i can understand why they don't want to do that if you don't want to do that adopt the japanese rule allow ties ties can happen in baseball i think there was one two years ago because it rained after in the sixth inning and they couldn't get the game going back again and they just and it was a one one they declared it a tie it's allowed uh, you know if they go do the Japanese rule, which says you play three extra innings, at the end of that, if there's no, uh, if nobody's won, it's a tie. Fine. You know, I'm not 
exactly happy about ties in games. It's my biggest flaw, I think, for soccer. I could really get into soccer except for the fact that so many of the games just end without a winner, right? Uh, and so many times you play for a tie. I don't think baseball would ever fall into the play for a tie bit. But, you know, if they went 12, then called it and just used a tie, that would be acceptable. Not great, but acceptable. It's better than playing a gimmicky form of baseball where you just put somebody in second and start from there, right? I don't see this happening in MLB. I hope this never happens in MLB. I'm really disappointed that they're doing it in the minors. If they want to f try something, try the Japanese method, right? Uh, you know, as I said, these are all kind of gimmicky possible solutions that will bite a few seconds here off the clock and bite a few seconds there off the clock and might get you down five or ten minutes, right, average on the game. Unlikely, to be honest with you. They're also talking about, well, they're not talking about, they're going to move the, uh, the pitching clock. When there's nobody on base, the pitcher is going to have to pitch within 15 seconds. Um, I mean, and the rules get, you know, kind of hinky here. But, you know, there's one rule that says that unless he's on the mound in the dirt around the uh, pitching rubber, um, you know, the clock doesn't start. So if you're a pitcher and you've been rattled or you need some time, you know, what do you do? You step off the mound before the catcher throws the ball back to you and you're in the grass and the clock doesn't start. So you can take whatever time you need to gather yourself. And on top of that, you don't have to throw to the plate. You can throw to first if there's somebody there, obviously. And if you throw to first, it doesn't count. And you can step off into the grass and get yourself back together before you step into the mound area and the clock starts again. Um, these are all silly rules that they're trying, right? Really silly rules. The pitch clock is not accomplishing huge, not accomplishing anything huge. Uh, you know, a little bit of shaving of a few minutes. Uh, the, you know, they're never really enforcing the keeping the batter in a box thing. Uh, you know, but, and you can't quick pitch a batter. Not allowed to do that, so you got to wait till the batter's ready anyway, uh, or at least set. And we're going to end up with all these silly little extra rules because baseball will not fix the period between, you know, half innings. They fix that, they fixed it all, right? Or just accept the fact that that baseball is a sport that's meant to be played at a semi-leisurely pace through a period of time having to do with about three hours, right? The people who grumble and gripe and moan about the length of a baseball game are A, the TV people because they want to be able to fit it in an exact box and boy they'd like to get a two and a half hour box but three hours if they could get that would be okay, right? And the football zombies, right? The people who are like, oh, baseball is so boring. It takes so long. It's a terrible sport. You know, the football zombies who don't realize, A, their sport takes longer to play on, on TV than baseball does, and B, there's more downtime in a football game than there is baseball, you know, uh, even before the doggone pitching clock. Okay, so that's the rant of the day. You know, if you want to fix it, baseball, Fix it the right way, right? Limit innings to 12 inning games and allow ties. Bring back, you know, intentional walks. Um, just the clock on the pitchers is almost meaningless, right? Uh, yes, I realize there are some pitchers in the majors that take a long time to pitch, but. I don't think that it's it's really a fixing or you're not fixing that much of the problem. Fix it between innings and you'll fix it for real. And that's all I've got to say on this matter. And with all that, uh, well, I'm going to tell you the same stuff I always do. Leave comments below. Tell me why I'm wrong because I'm sure there are 9 million people out there wanting to. Uh, tell me what I'm right about. Make comments on your own about what could be fixed. Uh, if you want to contact me personally, 
Uh, contact me at lammersk, L-A-M-M-E-R-S-K, at Twitter. Send me a direct message. And uh, if you like this video, hit like. If you like what you're seeing around here generally, hit subscribe and then watch every video 9 million times because that's the only way I'll ever get monetized under YouTube's new rules. And I just have one final bit of advice. Go watch some minor league sports.